All right, welcome back to Lightroom Classic 2020. And today we're gonna take a look at the adjustment brush. Now the adjustment brush is probably the most effective tool in Tony inside of Lightroom. All right, now I've reset this image and we're just gonna run through the basic adjustments here and then we're gonna go straight into, so we're gonna go ahead and leave this on, we're gonna go ahead and leave this on Adobe Color. We're gonna go ahead and do an auto white balance. I made it a little bit green, so we're gonna add some magenta. And it's a little bit dark overall. And we're gonna come in here and add some highlights and just kinda give those highlights a little teeny pop. Remember, the key here is not to go too far that you ruin one area to make another area better. So what we're gonna basically run into is this area is probably gonna be too dark. And that's okay, because that's what we're gonna use the adjustment brush for. And then we're gonna come in here and just make an overall exposure adjustment, and that looks pretty good. And we're just gonna go ahead and stop right there. I could come in here, there's a little bit of cyan in the image. I think that looks better. The adjustment brush is located right here. You can get to it by hitting the letter K. If you notice when you hover over something, it will tell you what it does and if it has a quick key in this sense, it's the letter K. So we can hit K and the adjustment brush comes up. This box here looks very, very similar to the basic box, however it's different. It also always has the last adjustments that you made. Notice it's not set at zero. Now the first time you use this, it's gonna be set at zero, but it retains the last adjustments that you have. So I made some crazy adjustments before this so you could see how this is gonna work. Now to reset everything here, you have a couple of ways to do it. One, you can just double click effect. However, if you hold the Alt Option button, you'll notice that effect turns to reset. So you could either come in here, double click this, everything will set to zero, or you could have came in and just hit reset and clicked it once, and that would do the same thing. Either way, that's the way that you set everything back to zero in this program. Conversely, just as we did before, if there's only one item that you wanna set back to zero, all you need to do is come over to the word Double click the word and it will set just that one item back at zero. This is important to get used to. Now before we go in here and start making adjustments, what we need to do is we actually need to come down here and understand the concept of how this brush information works inside of Lightroom. The first one is size. We're gonna come in here and we're adjusting the size of that brush. My brush is getting larger, my brush is getting smaller. The next is the feather, so I'm gonna increase my feather. Usually I'm working at about 50% feather. Now I'm gonna make this brush a little bit bigger. And you have two different ways that you can actually adjust the brush. One is come over here and slide this size. You can also use the keyboard. Next to the letter P is in Paul, there are two bracket keys. So the left bracket key is gonna make your item smaller. So let me go ahead and delete this real quick because it's causing some issues. The left bracket key will make the brush smaller and the right bracket key will make items larger. You'll notice that there are two rings around this brush. There's an inner ring and an outer ring. That distance between the inner ring and the outer ring is what's called feather. And what this is doing is it is making it transition from 100% of your effect out to zero. What this will do is make it so there's not a harsh line. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna switch over to Photoshop and demonstrate this. Now, this is doing the same thing. So I turned off my pointer. So all we see here is the brush. So this is my brush. Now on Photoshop, you'll notice I can have either a soft brush so this is a, with a strong feather. You'll notice it's 100% of effect and then it kind of fades out to the edge. If you have a hard brush, notice you get a hard edge. If I was to come in here and paint the color black, I have a hard edge. If I have a soft brush, I have a soft edge. 
Now, what this does is let you transition or kind of paint an effect in an area without being able to see it too much. Let's go ahead and hide both of these things. Next thing that we have inside of Lightroom, and I'll just switch on over real quick, is we have something here called flow. Now, flow is a little bit difficult to understand unless we come back over here to Photoshop. Flow works like this. So we have flow right up here. At 100% flow, it's gonna paint 100% black. Now, if we lower the flow, each time that we paint over an area, it's gonna get progressively darker by 4%. So each time I go over and over and over and over, it lets me build up over time until it gets to complete black. So this is gonna really help us inside of Lightroom when we're trying to brighten or adjust an area. Usually I have my feather because I found that, you know, this feather right here is like way too strong inside of Lightroom. We don't need that much. I usually have it around 50%. But the more accurate you need to be with applying an adjustment, the lower your feather needs to be and usually the smaller your brush. Flow, you can usually leave it at 100% unless you like the fact of building up certain areas. So let's assume we had four faces. One face needed to be brightened up a little, two of them need a little bit, and then one didn't need it at all. Flow would be helpful because you could lower that up and you could just build up each face independently until they're the right brightness, or in this case, any area of the image. But for right now, we're gonna leave the flow at 100. Density, think of it as kind of the opacity. There's also an auto mask button and we're not gonna get into that right now. So what we're gonna do is kind of scroll back up. We've got our big brush and we're gonna make a big giant adjustment just so you can see. So you'll notice as I dial in that adjustment with the adjustment brush, nothing has happened. With selective toning, you have to paint or apply it to a specific area. So what I'll do is I'll just brush over these yellow things here and they're all getting brighter. I've made the adjustment and then I've applied it 100%. Once you've applied that, in this case, it's like way too much. This is what's called a non-destructive adjustment. You can actually come back in and lower it and get it exactly where you want. And these adjustments are available anytime. You could quit out of Lightroom, come back in a couple days, and these adjustments would still be available and you would still be able to adjust them. As long as you don't delete the XMP file, you'll be able to adjust the adjustments that you made at any time within Lightroom. So we've made this adjustment here. We're gonna go ahead and just apply that everywhere. And so that looks pretty good. So we've, we've brightened up this one single area that we have right here. And this little point that you see here is where I kind of started this. And if I hover over it, it gives me something called the quick mask. And the quick mask kind of shows you the area that you've applied the effect to. Now, you can't really see the edge of where I did this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually come down here and I'm going to make an adjustment. But this time, I'm going to take the feather completely off. So we'll come in here and make a second adjustment. Now, to make another adjustment, you need to come up and hit new first. So that's telling the computer you wanna make a new adjustment. And I'm gonna make my brush a little smaller and then I'm gonna come in here and do this. Now you can see, because I didn't paint a feather, we've got this really hard edge here. So I'm gonna hit Command Z and undo that. And I'm gonna come back and increase that feather. And now I'm gonna paint this in. You can see, now it's still not done well, but we don't have that hard edge and it's allowing you to blend it into an area. And obviously we would come in here and do this a little bit more intelligently when we did this. And this is obviously way too much. We could come in here and lower this amount. And this way it looks realistic of what you're doing. Now this is my second control point. I have, if I hover over it, it shows me by quick mask where I did it. Now you can see right here in this area when I hover over, I kind of went way too far and I applied some of that in this area and I did not want to do that, that's not a big deal. If you wanna remove something that you did, you can come down here to the erase button. And if you notice in the erase button, the erase has changed to a minus in the middle. 
And now I can erase that area. And now if I come back over and hover over that area, you can see I've removed that from the center portion. Now I didn't do a great job, but that's okay because this is just a tutorial. I can make an adjustment. So if I wanted to make it brighter or make it darker, I could make those adjustments. If I want to come back and adjust this area, I need to select it. So you'll notice that there's a little black dot here in the center, and this one doesn't have a black dot. The one with the black dot means it's active. So if I come over here and click this, I can make that one active. And now when I make the adjustment, the area that I painted in for that adjustment is the one that is being made. If you want to delete an adjustment, all you have to do is come over, select it, and hit delete on your computer, and bam, just like that, it is gone. What we're gonna do here is I'm gonna turn this one back on, and I'm gonna show you a second way to erase. So we saw before that we can come down here and, and click erase. There's a quicker way. On any Adobe product, if you hold the Alt Option key, you'll notice that your brush automatically changes to a minus. Now the issue here with this is there's a really small feather. This is a hard brush. So what I'm gonna do is actually increase my feather a little bit, so now I have a feather on my erase brush, and then I can come in here and erase that effect from any area that I want because I'm holding the Alt Option key. So instead of like scrolling down and doing stuff, it's much easier to come in here and apply an effect, hold Alt Option, and paint it back out if that's what you need to do. This is called non-destructive editing in which you can make adjustments after the fact. Nothing is set in stone. Once again, if we want to set this back at default, I can double click effect. Everything's gonna zero back out and I can start over again. So what I would wanna do is hit new. I'm gonna make my adjustment. So in this case, I'm gonna brighten my feathers up a little bit and I'm gonna do a little highlight and we'll come over here. I'm gonna adjust my brush. Now you'll learn that you really need to spend a lot of time making sure your brush is the correct size. It really solves a lot of issues. Now, in these quick tutorials, I'm not really doing that because I don't wanna spend the time adjusting brushes and making these adjustments perfect. I'm just trying to show you what's going on. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. So we've got that. It's a little bit too much in the exposure, so we're gonna go ahead and lower that down. Now, what's the next area that I wanna tackle? Maybe I wanna bring out this center portion. So I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna hit new, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zero exposure back out, and this time I'm gonna increase my shadow areas a lot. And then I'm gonna come in here and apply this to this area, and you can see it's bringing out some detail in those areas. It looks like we need to increase the exposure a little bit, and bam, just like that, we're starting to get this sort of hint of detail and texture inside the center portion of the sunflower. Now out here on the outer edge, I have the choice. So one, if I want to increase maybe some highlights there, I just wanna make these like little spiny things on the end of these leaves and some highlights start to pop out. I can hit new, double click effect, increase my highlights and then I can start painting highlights over those areas to bring out some of that detail in the image. We're just doing this really quick, and that looks pretty good. These leaves still look a little bit blue, so if I want to increase those leaves, because I've already painted over them, I can also change the color a little bit and make them look a little bit more natural. And that is how you use the adjustment brush inside of Lightroom Classic. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave those below. And as always, don't forget to subscribe.